So, the wife and I, we had a little trip down to London uh, a week or so ago, Londinium, um, to see a friend in a West End play, <laughs> as you do. Um, uh, I don't mean to name drop, but our friend in this instance is actually Brian Cox, the actor, not the professor. Um, you know, the guy who was in the Bourne movies, I think he was in X-Men 2, uh, Troy. He was the original Hannibal Lecter, no less, before Anthony Hopkins took over. And the reason we know him is that my wife, is uh, her job uh, at Dundee University is executive support for the student executive and Brian is the university rector. So every time he's in town, Annie's basically his right hand man, so to speak. Uh, so we've kind of got to know, well Annie obviously knows him really well now, um, and, I, and through Annie I've got to know him. So anyway, he invited us down to London, to, he got us tickets for his play, um, which was good. It was called The Weir, it was like an Irish ghost story. And uh, he took us out to dinner afterwards uh, to the Ivy, which is one of those <sighs> uh, exclusive London restaurants um, that you need to be in the in the firmament in order to get a table there. Brian obviously is. And when we were coming out, I was directly behind Brian, and as soon as we hit the street. <laughs> His flashlights went off because, it's, as I say, it's, it's one of those kind of restaurants. So the paparazzi were hanging about outside. And it wasn't until afterwards when we got back to the hotel, I was saying to Annie, I was directly behind Brian in relation to where the paparazzi guy was, to where the photographer was. So if he was taking a picture of Brian with a flash, in theory, so we went online, because these things, they, they're processed and done within, like, a blink of an eye. And there, right enough, on Getty Images, which is like a worldwide archival site for photographs, there's a picture of Brian leaving the ivy, and in the background... <laughs> <ta -da! laughs> so any time Cosmopolitan or, or uh, Vogue or, or whoever wants a picture of Brian Cox leaving a fancy restaurant, they might use that. <laughs> it's quite conceivable I might actually make it into to Vogue. So, uh, oh, our hotel, yeah, um, the Hotel Russell, you might find this interesting actually. Just a, you know, your average little sort of dive as it were, um, you know, nothing particularly fancy. But it was actually designed, or parts of it were designed, by the same guy who designed, or designed parts of, the Titanic. And on their main staircase, right at the bottom of their main staircase, they've got this bronze dragon, which is called George, and if you rub his head it's meant to be good luck. And it, it was designed... Uh, uh, the statue was designed by that same guy. He had two made, two two statues were cast in bronze. One is on the staircase in the Hotel Russell, the other one is two and a half miles down at the bottom of the Atlantic on the Titanic, which I thought was kind of cool. But eh, anyway, so as we were walking around, oh we did the whole, my wife is a cummer bitch, uh, she's a huge fan of Benedict Cucumber Patch, as Brian calls them. <laughs> um, so we did the whole Sherlock thing, so we found uh, Speedy's Cafe. Uh, I don't know if any of you watch Sherlock, it's really, really good. Um, and to, well, what stands in for 221B Baker Street, I think it's actually 187 North Gower Street, but the Speedy's Cafe is genuine and is an actual cafe, it's not you know, it's not made up for the, the show or anything. So we, we did all that, it was quite good fun. But as you're walking around London, you build up your self an appetite so we decided to go for a bite to eat and we found ourselves in Chinatown and we went to one of those all you can eat buffets it was oh fantastic but when we came out at the corner of my eye I spotted this little hobby shop down these stairs so I was in there like a rat down a drain pipe or up a drain pipe or whatever it is rats do with drain pipes um, it was great nice, nice little shop all curious things right enough but I saw this set here. It's actually it's a kit with a conversion. Now I don't normally do conversion sets. I, I just prefer to buy it, get the kit and build it in, in one. I'm not particularly fussed about having a particular variant or whatever. But anyway, I saw this and I couldn't really resist it because I quite like my movies and stuff. So the original kit is this one. It's the 633K models uh, triple number 43 from Star Trek the original series. Um, and this little fellow, he appeared in the infamous episode, Trouble with Tribbles. Uh, and also, he made a little uh, guest appearance in an episode of Deep Space Nine. 
Uh, granted, he had his hair dyed and was coiffed up a little bit uh, because he sat on Dax's head. But uh, uh, that's this little chap here. Now, the thing is, it comes with this, well, it doesn't come with it, but the package deal was that you, you buy this and you get this conversion kit. Huge box again, considering that all that comes in it is this guide and that little bottle of paint. But this is the Gidante Miniatures uh, prepubescent stripe conversion set uh, to turn your triple into a prepubescent gremlin. And in this instance, it's stripe, the, you know, the, the really nasty evil one. Um, yeah, which was, which was fun. Um, the, the only problem is that <coughs> the triple, and I don't want to come across like a rivet counter here, but the triple has a 5,000 strand fur count, whereas a prepubescent gremlin has a 4,850 fur strand count, which means there's an additional 150 strands that you have to reduce in order for it to be an accurate representation of a prepubescent gremlin. So I basically pulled out a few clumps and it looked like a 150 odd strands, so I think we were okay. But the other problem is that a uh, treble has a fur length of 42mm. Now, a prepubescent gremlin has a fur length of 38mm. Now, there's two, uh, sorry, 4mm of a difference. Now, that's 4mm all the way around the outside circumference, which means an additional 8mm of fur that you have to get rid of. Now, Gidanti Miniatures do actually manufacture a tool specifically designed to remove any excess fur so that you have an accurately represented uh, gremlin. But the tool is over £700, so I, I kind of hummed and hawed and thought, eh, but I ended up using this neat little gizmo here, um, which is a pair of scissors, and it worked perfectly okay. Uh, so here's the, the finished, here's the reveal, as it were, uh, prepubescent gremlin. The, the, the conversion kit is basically this uh, guide, uh, this slotted guide and the idea is you put your triple underneath it and you, you wiggle it back and forward until you get an appropriate amount of fur and then you use this oil based paint because you cannot ever use water based paint anywhere near a gremlin type kit it's just no you just don't do it so you get this little thing of paint and you spray that on and that's what then gives you the stripe uh, from the movie. That's the, the nasty little one that, you know, um, the leader of the, the evil gremlins. But, you know, I'm trying to diversify. I'm trying to do things a little bit different um, that isn't, you know, that doesn't have a propeller on the front and comes from World War II. So this is, you know, this is part of my reformation as it were. So, yeah, nice little kit. Quite enjoyed doing that one. I also picked up this smokeless ashtray when I was in there, but it doesn't seem to work very well, does it? Hmm, I think I've actually missed a few strands, so I think I'll give it a little touch up. Oh shit! <laughs>